they need to ask us. We never saw this man. We never gave it up, we never surrendered it. But people still think that you have the right to come in here. And do what you want to do. that the Cree Indians would have the right to hunt and fish. Except now, if you look at northern Alberta, particularly northeastern Alberta, where the tar sands developments are, the developments are so vast, the disruption of the landscape is so extensive, that it's now fair to say the tree rights themselves can no longer be meaningfully exercised, because the habitat of the animals and it's being destroyed right before our eyes. of any reasonable reclamation are so high that there would be no money made on the oil sands. And this is only the beginning, as new steam-driven extraction methods begin to reach deposits too deep to strip mine, the wilderness affected by industry will dwarf what we see today. I don't think people realize how big the sacrifice zone is going to be. It's an area slightly bigger than Greece, a third the size of Norway. Oil sands are a very unique resource, and oil sands development does bring unique environmental challenges. Alberta's oil sands are concentrated near the Earth's surface. Contaminants are picked up uh, naturally through waterways and enter the ecosystem. As a province, we monitor water quality carefully, and to date, all of the data shows uh, no long-term effects to water quality from oil sands development. In the mining operation, you're exposing all kinds of stuff to, to the air and to the wind. You take the bitumen out of the ground, you've got to take out all of the coke in it, you've got to add a whole bunch of hydrogen, and that's a very energy-intensive process, so you've got lots of air pollution coming from that third of the country's nitrogen oxides and the sulfur dioxides are all coming from oil and gas facilities in Alberta and the majority of all that is coming from the Fort McMurray area. For every barrel, a bit of a you create a barrel and a half of, of toxic waste that goes into a tailings pond. Those tailings ponds are all made of unlined sand and the majority of them are leaking. The whole stream of production from beginning to end is very industrial very messy and it's got pollutants associated with each and every stage. We have some very large industrial projects here that to the uninformed eye appear to be out of control. The fact of the matter is that this is one of the most highly regulated industries that there is in the world. This is anything but the Wild West. But scientists question the government's ability to even detect pollution in the river. For some things, they don't have limits detection that are good enough to even detect fairly high concentrations, let alone background concentrations. And worst of all, they don't measure airborne inputs. They have no idea. And if this system had no airborne inputs, it would be unique in all the world. Most monitoring of water pollution in the oil sands is done by a monitoring program paid for by the industry. Its findings are not public. It simply reports that year 